everybody, I'm Stephanie, I'm with Nine Health, and today we're at the CU College of Nursing, I'm with Dr. Noreen Nicole, and I'll explain to you in a moment what we're doing here. But first, last week, in case you missed it, we did a really cool demonstration of overcoming positional vertigo, and that's a very helpful demo, and you'll find it on the Nine Health Fair Facebook page, so if that's something that you have issues with and you need to overcome that, then go check that video out. But let's get into what we're doing here now today. We're going to go over wet wrap therapy and treatments for atopic dermatitis, eczema, um, dry skin conditions. I'm going to do some miniature version of something and we'll explain that. So I'm going to dip my hands in. You are. And Dr. Noreen Nicole is going to explain to us the research you've been doing regarding wet wrap therapy and what exactly it's all about. Okay, great. So, hi, for the last 30 years, I've really committed myself to trying to teach patients and families how to ma better manage atopic dermatitis and dry skin care and general skin care right. overall. And so we're going to blend all three of these things today. But my research really focused on using wet wrap therapy to manage moderate to severe atopic dermatitis in children. Okay. Um, and what I want to explain, first of all, is the foundation of wet wrap therapy is really good basic skin care that we coined as a phrase also soak and seal. And that's what I want the general public to walk away with so my today. My are going to feel fabulous They're going to feel fabulous today. And if you do this before bedtime, they'll feel even better when you wake up every morning. Great. Right. Good in the wintertime. Good in the wintertime. And, you know, we all are so grateful to live in this beautiful state of Colorado. But because of our relatively low relative humidity, being low, the dry indoor heat and our climate, people really are predisposed to having dry skin whether they have atopic dermatitis or not. But atopic dermatitis is a really common form of eczema that both children and adults have and they can have it to really severe disease, to, uh, severe levels. And so the wet wrap therapy that I'm talking about is actually an intervention that we do. It's layers, you use a wet, wet layer of clothing over a topical medication followed by a dry layer. And that's really what wet wrap therapy is called. It's just part of atopic dermatitis management. And this is a relatively old therapy. I published the first study of this back in 1987 in the American Journal of Nursing. And for 30 years, we've been using this as the standard of treating atopic dermatitis. But the reason it's become so popular, and so many people are interested in a recent study that I did just a couple of years ago, showing how valuable wet wrap therapy can be towards treating patients is there are new drugs on the market. Right. Lots of people, you can't turn the TV on without seeing a new AI right. for the new atopic dermatitis drugs. And those of us in the field are very grateful for those drugs. But part of the criteria is supposed to be that you fail conventional therapy or routine therapy, which is, that's what we're talking about today, and which each of you can use. Yeah, so something that's less extreme than jumping right to a medication first. What, like a steroid? What are some of the medications? Right, so the medication that's used in all the studies that I did related to wet wrap therapy are called topical corticosteroids. Okay. Topical corticosteroids come in many ranges to very safe to very high. And usually you use about a moderate strength topical corticosteroid with wet wrap therapy when you're using it for moderate to severe disease. But when you have mild disease, you can use an over-the-counter topical corticosteroid. And I don't want to really get into saying that, you, but you could use these over-the-topical products doing this kind of therapy at home because that's why we've said they're over-the-counter and they're right. safe to use. But what I want you to know is before you use, whether it's a, a over-the-counter topical corticosteroid or a really good moisturizer, there's something you need to do first, and that's what you're doing. Okay, yeah. And, and it's again coining this phrase of so conceal skin care. And we really, that's actually a term now used by the National Eczema Association and in the national guidelines for the treatment of atopic dermatitis is this so conceal. So, what that basically boils down to is if you're a bath taker, I applaud your efforts. And I want to tell you that learning to take a bath again. Not only, especially if you can do it in a relaxing environment where you enjoy it, we'd okay. like people to get into a soaking bathtub for 10 to 15 minutes. But when you can't, and let's say you have bad hand eczema or just bad chapping of your hands, mm -hmm. which many people in Colorado do. People, nurses, physicians, hairdressers, 
um, stylus, anyone in contact with the environment knows that this dry weather can really take a toll on your hands in the winter time. Right. And so if you just wanted to treat your hands, now this is instead of taking a bath, I, I would <laughs> encourage you to get in that bathtub, soak your hands with the rest of your body, but just put your, your hands into a basin of water. You're going to soak them for a good 15, 10 to 15 yeah, minutes. I was going to say, we started this at the beginning of the segment because right. it takes a while for Be it to soak. Because there's an old myth that you really should do short showers and baths to avoid dry skin being worse. You save and water, water, I guess. Yes. No, <laughs> and it, it could save water, but it won't save your hands. Right. And so I think what we want to tell people is it's really about the soaking bath or shower. Thank it's that think. soak and seal philosophy. So for 10 minutes, you're going to get into a bath. We don't want you to add additives. There's a lot of myths around the fact that if I add a bath oil, that's actually going to encourage this. And actually, it interferes. The other thing is bath oils are the leading cause of broken hips in the elderly, believe it or not, and in children wow. to it's cause slipping. injuries slipping in the tub. So you don't need anything in the bath water. The second step of this is, is if your hands are dirty, we encourage you to cleanse ahead of time, but that's another piece that we want people to know about. You need to use nice, gentle cleansers. And, the, and really what makes a sensitive skin product sensitive skin mm -hmm. is it's dye-free and fragrance-free. Now that's not in vogue with a lot of the stores that are really promoting these things that smell really great. Right. But yeah. the reality is, is fragrances and dyes are the number one and two irritant and allergens that actually affect both atopic dermatitis, contact dermatitis, and actually irritate your skin. Right. So if you're having trouble with dry chap skin, we want you to avoid perfumes and dyes products in general, whether it's your cleansers, whether it's your moisturizers, your makeups, all of those things. It really makes a difference. So part one of Soak and Seal was you soak your hands for 10 to 15 minutes. Two was to use that gentle cleanser and number three is to seal it with the appropriate moisturizer. And that's the other big message for everyone today is all moisturizers are not created equal. And I think that we've gotten away from people understanding what the difference are between really therapeutic products and so many. You walk under the shelves of your yeah. grocery store and your drugstore and you have hundreds, right. literally hundreds of choices. And so I am showing today three different versions of, th of an ointment and, and three di four different versions of a cream. And all stuff you can buy at any drugstore. Any drugstore and, and grocery store, but I want to explain to people why there's a difference. So ointments seal better than creams, seal better than lotions. And why is that? Because the lotions have lots of cream, have water and alcohol in them. And um, we really, we almost had a guest walk through <laughs> to say, but we avoided it. I that. mean, this looks very intriguing. Yeah. Everyone, it's like Everybody a spa to see you call the nursing today. <laughs> so um, again, going back to the fact that lotions actually contain a lot of water and alcohol. And so anything that generally pumps out of a bottle, if you have severe dry skin or atopic dermatitis, we tell you to avoid those because we know that creams and ointments are going to work better for you. The problem is with patient preference, sometimes people don't want to use the stickier ointments. Yeah. The reality is it's the best thing. And if I can get people to do this at bedtime and realize that the next part of this step is going to be after, so I think yeah, we're, we're really it? close. Well, almost 11, 10 here? Yeah, we're okay. almost 11. Mm -hmm. Where are we? I mean, I'm relaxed. I'm fine. And so we're going to take this off. And so in this version, I'm actually going to have her take Aquaphor ointment that people are really, really familiar with. I didn't even, oh, look at this. We didn't open this Brand new tube. Aquaphor. That's fine. Brand new tube. <laughs> um, and again, ointments seal better than creams, seal better than lotions. I can't get this one off. So therefore, we are going to take some Vanaply ointment. Make sure that Another there ointment. is. I've never Vanaply. heard of this one, but this one you can find as well. Vanaply Apply is made by the same company that makes Vana Cream. And one okay. of the things about this product that they write on, again, is free of fragrance dyes, masking fragrance, lanolin, and many formaldehyde, many of the things that actually are irritating. Yeah. So she soaked her hands for 10 to 15 minutes. She's going to, we didn't use a cleanser. Now you've spent 10 to 15 minutes taking that bath or soaking your hands. We want you just to pat your hands dry. Okay. Americans are the most vigorous 
um, dryers in the world. I have to tell you, I've had the good fortune to be able to travel all over the world speaking about atopic dermatitis management. People are shocked that Americans take baths and showers up to twice a day, and the, the way that we dry, having watched families and children do this for years. So you're patting dry. Pat dry. And then you're going to apply your right, well, not back of hands. Front back of hands or front. But the biggest thing, turn your hands over. Okay. The biggest thing with both moisturizers and with sunscreens is people never use enough. There is no medication. Yeah, this feels like this. a lot right now. It feels like a lot. It feels gooey right now. Yes. And the thing about this is, is the way we're doing this in soap and sealing, there's going to be the third step of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to seal with the, with the cotton product of your choice. You can use simple cotton gloves that you can buy at any drugstore or grocery store. Or you can go buy some of these nicer, cooler looking, moisturizing <laughs> cotton gloves. Or just There's socks. nothing so special. <laughs> or you can be doing the same treatment, whether it's on your hands. Many people do it on their feet. Yeah, that would be nice. Yes. on your feet. Cotton socks work great. And so after you do this, you're going to go ahead and put on your cotton gloves. Like it's going to be hard to get a glove on now. No, it slides <laughs> right on, actually. <laughs> All right. And this is very similar to what wet wrap therapy would be with atopic dermatitis, though these would be wet. Okay. And then we would put a dry pair over the top and frequently we use these wet and then put something more sealing for kids like the tube sock right over the top of okay. it to keep it on and actually make sure that these are in place underneath their jammies. And stuff. Right. Well, we have oh, a picture over here. What I, we didn't go over what it looks like, but just with wet wrap therapy, it's more of a whole cover kind of like... A well, mummy wrap is what I like, kind of look, was what it looks like, but and, and I covering more you, of the skin. And I can tell you with kids, that's exactly what we tell them. And I have to tell you, we're very grateful yeah, to, my three -year -old to Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, Spider -Man. Spider Man has become our mantra <laughs> for understanding for kids to what this might look yeah. like, and they're very into it. Yeah, well, it helps them feel better. So. It does help them feel better. Okay, but we're just doing my hands and making them soft and nice. Right, and so the big thing is is that we encourage people after you've put on a nice ointment like this, again, ointments preferred over creams, just leave it on overnight. If they fall off, they fall off. Okay. But you're going to find this out. This is uncomfortable. I can sleep this way. If you actually did this every night for people that have these fissures and cracks and some of that irritated skin, right. you're going to see it heal in just a few days. It's yeah, I was going to ask you how many days you'd have yeah. to do this to see an improvement. Usually within three to four days we but, see a dramatic improvement. So if you see that improvement, can you stop doing it for a few days? Absolutely. Or okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's the other thing is we like to put things into people's routine that make sense. Right. We don't want this to become burdensome so that people don't want to do it. You want to do it so you feel good. This is about skin health. Right. Yes. Right. Are there any questions from Facebook Live? If anyone has any questions, yes? The only question we got was about using essential oils as a treatment for eczema. So in general, I, unfortunately, we do not recommend oils. And it's because an ointment and an oil are actually not the same vehicle, and they're not the same product. And many of the essential oils that people can find today, unfortunately, have a lot of fragrance in them. Some of them also have a dye or a coloring in it. And I can't overemphasize the number of people that are both either irritated or allergic to the dyes and the fragrances that are in some of these various products. Yeah, so likely, more likely to irritate than help. Right. Now, there are exceptions to that rule that some may be helpful, but again, in general, ointments are not oils, and we recommend ointments and creams. So when um, someone is getting a full wet wrap therapy, is that something they still can do at home? It's just more time consuming, obviously, because it's the whole body. And right. And actually, do you have to go to a doctor? Does a child have to go to a doctor? So to anyone requiring wet wrap therapy for atopic dermatitis, right. Number one, we don't use it for mild atopic dermatitis. Okay. We use it for moderate to severe. Okay. This is an acute intervention, and it needs to be done with the appropriate topical corticosteroid. Okay. Therefore, requiring a prescription, okay. and usually you're getting that from an atopic dermatitis specialist, like a dermatologist or an allergist immunologist, right. or a pediatrician or family practice who sees a lot of eczema. Yeah, how, how common is it for kids to have that? And Eczema, the, the prevalence of eczema is quoted to be up to 30%. Right. So you can have, you know, two in, two in ten, three in ten kids in every classroom before the age of five. Yeah. Most kids actually, if they're going to develop atopic dermatitis, have done it by the age of five, 90%. 
but there are some that have adult onset or later onset. But the more severe forms tend to last later into school age years into adulthood. Okay, so it might be a therapy they have to continue doing to they will relieve that. And, and that's that's our big message about this. No matter what other therapy you do, you have to do good basic skincare. Right. So the soak and seal piece is the part we want people to do every single day. Just take your bath or shower and use a good moisturizer. You have no idea. There's actually studies to show that therapeutic moisturizers can actually prevent and treat mild atopic dermatitis. So, so getting out of the shower, I usually use a lotion, um, but would you suggest people use an ointment all over as opposed to a lotion? It depends. Okay. It, okay, first of all, if you have atopic dermatitis, our answer is yes, because you need that barrier to be more protected okay. and intact. If you have normal, what we call normal skin, you might do fine with a good therapeutic lotion or a cream. Okay. But understand that ointments are going to work better than creams are going to work better than lotions. But you have to use it for it to work. Right. So and pat you know, yourself dry. Pat yourself dry. Don't don't overdo that at all. <laughs> okay. If, are there any other questions or any is there any other advice or anything else you'd like to the say? The only thing that I usually end all discussions about soak and seal with is don't forget your sunscreen. My three words of message for my entire career have been soak seal sunscreen. And remember, we're a mile high, and you need that just as right. much in the winter. The good news about winter is most of your skin is covered with clothing, and so you really only have to protect your hands and face at that point. People should be using a moisturizer or a lip balm or a foundation that already has sunscreen in it. About a 15, SPF 15? Or? SPF 15 is always a good rule, but you know the labeling has changed. Yeah. And the new word that we want everybody to look for on a tube of sunscreen is broad spectrum. Okay. So, all right. Just use your Soap sunscreen. Soap seal, broad spectrum sunscreen. sunscreen. That's it. All right. Well, that's all we have. Thank you so much for talking with us. Thanks and we will wrap it up, and we'll see you next Tuesday at 11 again for Health Happens right here on Facebook.